Hi, my name is Joe Dupont. I'm the fisheries manager for the Idaho Department of Fish and Games Clearwater Region. When we all head out fishing for the day, our hopes are to have a good time fishing, some long lasting memories, and the last thing we want is to have conflict on the river. Salmon and steelhead fishing is enjoyed by thousands of anglers every year in Idaho. The beautiful scenery, time with friends, battling these amazing fish all make this an activity beginner and seasoned anglers can truly enjoy. When fishing for salmon or steelhead, one can fish in solitude or with crowds. This video provides some advice developed by local anglers to use while fishing around others. During the steelhead and salmon seasons, anglers will often congregate along short sections of rivers. When this happens, it can bring out the best and the worst behavior from anglers. Recently, conflict between anglers and some of our busier rivers have resulted in anglers asking for rule changes that would, in their mind, eliminate the behavior of those creating the conflict. This is a tricky slope that, if taken, could cascade into a myriad of rule changes that will only restrict fishing opportunities for other anglers. For example, rules have been created in the past that have restricted the use of baits, boats, fishing from shore, and fishing all together. The Idaho Department of Fishing Game would rather not create new rules that restrict how and where people fish just to address angler conflicts. Regardless of which river you are fishing in or what species you are fishing for, we believe there are some basic guidelines of fishing etiquette that if followed will allow all types of anglers to get along and help make sure new rules that ultimately restrict our fishing opportunities are not created. There are three guiding principles that, if followed, will solve almost all forms of conflict that somebody could encounter when fishing. But it's important for us to remind ourselves of them before we go fishing, as well as in all aspects of life. They're pretty simple. Treat others how you want to be treated. Hey guys. Talk respectfully to others around you. We didn't see it. We'll move over to the other side. I'm sorry. Hey, it's all right. Appreciate it. And be tolerant of others' mistakes. I know these seem obvious, but if we could put these ideas into practice, it would go a long way to keeping peace on the river. In addition to these simple guidelines, it's also helpful to know and employ some long accepted strategies anglers commonly use to reduce conflict. A common practice among anglers is those fishing a spot first have some priority. This means someone fishing a spot first can expect to fish in the manner they choose without being disturbed by someone who arrives later. If conditions aren't crowded, anglers may reasonably expect to fish in some solitude. This assumption applies whether the first angler is fishing on the bank or from a boat. Now having said this, if you get to a spot second and are unsure what to do, talk to the person and ask if it's okay to fish near them. Hey, how you doing? Now life is rarely perfect. When a section of river is in high demand, crowding will dictate how close people can be expected to fish to one another. By nature, we can all be a bit territorial. This is where conflicts start popping up. When it comes to fishing for salmon and steelhead, it's not uncommon for anglers to gather along the same section of river. If you fish in these areas, even if you are the first one there, expect others to join you and to fish in close proximity to you. When fishing in crowded areas, following a few basic principles can make all the difference between having a great fishing experience or a bad one. An accepted practice is it is okay to join in with a group of other anglers as long as you're not restricting their ability to fish. This means they must be able to continue to cast and make their drift. And as always, make sure you talk with other anglers before squeezing in. I think it'd be all right if I got in here and fish a little bit. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Depending yep. on how many people show up, anglers could end up staggered every 10 feet or every two feet. Another accepted practice when fishing in a crowded area is to fish in a similar manner as others are around you. 
For example, if a group of anglers are all side drifting bait from shore, don't expect to come in and start plunking. If you come to a spot where anglers are side drifting from a boat, don't expect to drop anchor here. If you don't know how to fish a certain section of river, the best thing to do is ask. So we're drift and you experienced so we're anglers, be sure to educate those who are new to the sport. Another guideline for fishing in crowded areas is to fish in sync with your fellow anglers. Failing to do so can result in tangled lines and some irritated people. For example, when a group of anglers are drift fishing from shore, they can fish close together by casting in order and in the same general direction. The most downstream angler is always the first to cast, then the others follow in order. Don't forget when fishing in crowded conditions, this is especially a time when anglers need to be tolerant of others' mistakes. And we can't forget when an angler yells, Fish on! Everybody around them needs to reel in as quickly as possible. Fishing in sync is also true when fishing from a boat. Watch how many boats can fish in the same area by fishing in order. In this situation, boats need to maintain the same speed as the anglers below them. Once a boat finishes their drift, they can proceed to the top of the hole and keep the rhythm going. Going at different speeds or out of order is likely to irritate those fishing around you and lead to tangled lines. A suggestion for anglers, if you don't want to fish in a similar manner as those fishing around you, try finding another spot where you can fish without impacting others. If you like to fish in a crowded area, realize it is very likely that somebody may accidentally cast over your line when you have a fish on. If you can't stay cool in a situation like this, Maybe it's best to fish elsewhere. Another accepted practice is don't low hole another angler. Many anglers tend to fish in a downstream manner. This is especially true of fly anglers, but also boaters back trolling or side drifting. Notice how this fly angler takes a step downstream after every cast and will continue to do so until they have fished the entire run. So if you start fishing directly downstream of somebody in one of these cases, many anglers assume you're essentially cutting them off and trying to steal a fish they're working their way to. This is known once again as low holing and is very frowned upon. Now let's talk about boats for a minute. One fact that many anglers don't realize is when back trolling in clear water, a boat can actually herd fish downstream and often when you get to the end of the run where these fish begin stacking up is when you catch many of your fish. Cutting somebody off or low holing them and getting to these fish first can cause tempers to flare. To avoid low holing another angler, whether they are in a boat or on shore, the rule of thumb is to start fishing upstream of them and then proceed downstream behind them at a similar speed. In some situations, an angler may fish in one spot and not move. Hey, how you doing? Oh, good. In this case, it may not bother the angler if you fish downstream of them. However, don't assume this. Remember, a very important rule on the river is to talk with an angler first. Hey, do you mind if I fish right here below you? Oh, sure, go ahead. I'm just fishing this point here. Go ahead. All right, thanks a lot. So you know you aren't impacting their fishing experience. If you're fishing from a boat, you're likely to pass anglers on shore. It's a situation that is ripe for conflict, but doesn't have to be. If you're in a boat and fishing past other anglers, the right thing to do is move to the other side of the river to give the shore angler room to make their cast. Or pull your line in and float downstream a reasonable distance before you start fishing again. When in doubt, talk to the other anglers. You'll often be surprised how tolerant other anglers are if you just ask how far out they would like you to fish. No, fish on through! 
It's likely they'll tell yeah. you not to worry and fish on through. Repeatedly drifting through a hole multiple times in front of another angler is a sure way to create conflict. Please don't attempt to do this unless you talk to the angler first. At the same time, bank anglers need to be aware that if a boat is already fishing a hole, hey guys. they should not expect to start fishing and have the boater change hey. what they are doing. Mind if I fish here? Remember, those who are at a spot first have priority. Well, we've got this pretty well covered. There's another good spot right around the corner though. Okay, thanks a bunch. Many times the boat anglers won't mind letting the bank angler fish in, but sometimes not. Just be sure to ask. One of the most frequent complaints we get on some of our rivers is about boat wakes. On many of Idaho's rivers, motor boats are allowed and have a right to fish these waters just as much as everybody else. However, if you elect to fish from a motor boat, it's important to do it in a safe and respectful way. A guiding principle in the fishing community is the driver of a boat needs to think about the impact the wake of their boat will have on others. For example, Anytime a wake can put somebody in danger, cause damage to a boat, or significantly disrupt their fishing, a boat driver needs to slow down so he doesn't leave a wake. Even though boaters are responsible for minimizing their wake, there are places they must travel at higher speeds and just can't slow down. Examples include in shallow water, boaters need to stay on step or plane to make sure they don't hit bottom. Boats traveling upstream against a heavy current need to use more power and travel at higher speeds to navigate these fast waters. When these conditions exist, all anglers need to be aware of them. If you are fishing in a place where boats need to travel at higher speeds, make safe choices. Don't put yourself at risk by wading out too far in these areas. Be aware of where the boating lane is. When you hear boats coming, be sure to be in a place where boat wakes will not influence your safety. Even though everyone has the responsibility to make safe choices, a boater is expected to warn others when their wake might be dangerous. Before a boater enters an area where they have to travel at high speeds and can't slow down, they need to stop and let anglers know they are coming through. Boaters can do this by honking their horns, waving or shouting to give others a chance to get out of the way. Since all boaters will find themselves in a situation at some time where they must travel by another boat or angler at higher speeds, it's important to know how to leave the least amount of wake when passing others. First, when boats are on step, or plane, they travel faster, but leave less wakes than boats traveling slower and plowing through the water. Secondly, an important factor for a boater to learn is how to throw the wake. To throw it away from somebody, you do it by turning the stern away from them. This literally directs the mass of the wake in the opposite direction. If you're on shore, this is what you'd experience with the wake thrown away from you. This is what you'd experience if the wake was thrown toward you. It can make a big difference when it comes to safety. One aspect of fishing that can really frustrate anglers is conflicts at the boat ramp. The goal when putting your boat in at the boat ramp is to not make others wait. Make sure your straps are off your motor, your motor is up, your rods are all in the boat, your cooler's in there, your plugs are in place. That way, when it's your turn to put your boat in, you can quickly back it down and you won't be making others wait. It's a sad fact where salmon and steelhead anglers fish, garbage is often common. I don't know about you, but this really bothers me. We all have a decision to make. You can be known as the type of person who could care less about what our rivers look like, or you can be known as the type of person who does their part to keep our rivers clean. It seems like a fairly easy decision to make to me, and it's easy to do.
Idaho has beautiful rivers with lots of room for anglers to fish in many different ways. For those spots that get a lot of fishing pressure, we hope our tips will help keep conflicts to a minimum. Be safe, good luck, and have fun fishing.